Some of y'all listening, y'all know what's coming. Y'all know what question I'm about to ask and you don't want to hear it, but I'm going to ask it. What do the first five minutes of your day look like? What do the last 15 minutes of your day look like? Genuinely, if I had to take your last 30 nights and give you a sum and recap, what does it look like? JJ and it is the mini man so Fridays in case you guys didn't know these are on YouTube as well which is always ironic because I do watch podcasts on YouTube or video podcasts and I always watch like 30 seconds of it and then I don't and I watch 30 seconds of it and then I don't but I think for me when I'm at work it's actually more convenient to pull up YouTube and watch there ironically than it is on my phone sometimes so just to let you guys know the mini man sods are now officially on YouTube and we are live let's go so a couple housekeeping items before we jump into the episode today which I promise you is not gonna go where I think you think it's gonna go like I know you know that you think you know where it's gonna go and it's not gonna go there, okay? We're gonna get real and we're gonna get transparent, okay? I'm just gonna be upfront. But before we go there, two quick things. Patreon, that is the best way. If you guys enjoy this, use this. If you enjoyed this episode and it hit right, it hit different and it served you, then a great way that you can give back to us is through Patreon. That is so we can keep this podcast up and going because we need, yes, you listening to this, we need your help. So last thing, what I'm loving lately, listen, I gave in and it was maybe one of the most life-changing moments of my life. I went, I know you can find them at Costco, you can buy them in bulk, but I just happened to be walking to Walgreens. I saw it. It is the Fair Life Elite Power, Core Power protein drink. It was, it was five bucks. 42 grams of protein, 170 calories. And when I tell you that this was the most insane, delicious, mind-blowing thing I've ever tasted, it was unreal. It had 42 grams of protein. It was the best thing I've ever tasted. My algorithms on what Instagram and TikTok have been infested by this thing called a Ninja Creamy, which I'm so close to getting. It basically just freezes whatever you want and then you pull it out the next day and it whips it up into an ice cream. And I've seen this Fair Life Elite Power just, just, it's just destroying my feed and I'm so close to buying it because you know I love that ice cream. And I'm telling you, I tasted this stuff. And this is not an ad. I wish it was. I wish I could get my hands on one bottle. I'm like daydreaming about this stuff. It tasted so good. So I'm genuinely considering getting a Costco membership just so I can get my hands on this stuff again. I haven't stopped thinking about it since I bought it. Fairlife Elite Core Power. Best thing I've ever tasted. Hands down. So today's episode is our red flag season 11. I'm super pumped to talk to you guys about it because this is a legit, like if you're a human being and you have a phone, like this is a hard one. And you know, I think in dating, one thing I hear over and over again from guys and girls is I like them, but dude, they are obsessed with their phone. Like we're in small group, we're at church, we're on a date and they're just on their phone, like mindlessly at every moment. And I hear the opposite. I hear, I love him. He is amazing, but like he is always on his phone. Like he, he's a very important guy, makes a lot of money, which I love, but he's always on his phone. He's like on call and he's not a doctor, right? He's like on call for his, his manager. His manager has more access to him than I do. Right. So I see it in a lot of different cases. I mean, it, if someone's obsessed with their phone, it can mean a lot of things. Like it can be legitimate, their job, like their career, and they have to be on call. It can be, you know, they're just vegging out. Like they're just bored in that moment and they're escaping that moment to go on whatever app they want. It can be capturing, like incessantly capturing every moment like around them. Like I, we talked about the main character energy. They got to film Get Ready With Me. They got to film Get Up With Me. They got to film 
to go to the bathroom with me. I mean, they're like incessantly filming and posting, you know, and then it, you could be addicted to your like, listen, I should include iPad for my parents and send them this episode. I mean, the baby boomers should get their hands on the iPads. They eat those things up. They love to criticize all the millennials and Gen X and people from their phones. I'm like, dude, let's look at your iPad screen time. I'm, is this a joke? You guys are addicted to these Fox News apps and videos and Netflix. Like, don't come at me. I, I see the plank in your own eye, okay? But it, it can be educational. It could be literally looking at news, incessantly reading a Kindle. And then last week, I think there's an obsession and can be, you know, biblical, like spiritually a person who's just obsessed with getting their podcasts and their sermons. And we'll go into this because I know that one's a little bit mm, spicier. You could, you know, you could think that you could never have too much, you know, word and too much, you know, feeding your soul. But we're going to talk about that because I do think, and we'll give some litmus tests. Are they addicted to the phone? Am I? And so forth in today's episode. Let's go. We're talking about primarily consumption of your cell phone device of what I would say any sort. I mean, if their cell phone use has grown to a place where it consumes and ravages your free seconds of the day, period. I mean, yes, even spiritually, like if you had to draw this out, those free seconds all throughout the day in traffic, in the bathroom, in the line, anytime you're just waiting and you have this over the top obsessive need to be on your phone, even if it's like spiritual feeding, I think it can be too much. Now, realistically, like the spiritual example, I think is a bad example because if we're being honest, that's like not 99% of us. Like, I think for most of us, it's work, it's vegging out, and it's, you know, maybe educational at its finest. But realistically, I would just say before we start, and you're asking this question, this person is on their phone so much, like it's a huge turnoff. I would just say, <laughs> before we go there and start evaluating, have we checked ourselves? Because I cannot transparently talk about this episode with authority. Like I can talk about it with extreme experience, but I can't talk about like, hey, I've, I've beaten the war on my phone of distraction. That's actually one of the big ongoing things for me and has been honestly for years now. Like if I'm just being honest, I love my phone. I love Twitter and I love consuming. If I have a free second, and many parts of my day, I go straight to Twitter. I don't even think about it. And it's kind of scary. And I can talk about why it consumes me, why it's a red flag. I can tell you what to look for when evaluating it. But I just want to be clear. I can't talk about this out of like authoritative position where I've demonstrated, you know, diligent discipline and self-control like consistently over time. I've tried and I have some good tips and some things that th that went well. But, you know, that basically gives two things. One, it's an opportunity for me to grow alongside anyone here who's willing to admit that, yeah, I got a, I got an issue. And number two, it gives me firsthand experience to talk about the, the challenge and the issue of being, well, addicted to your phone, obsessed with your phone. And realistically, I mean, you know, I think we have to go to Matthew 7, where it's, why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your own? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you can clearly remove the speck of your brother's eye. And I think right here, the biggest thing I would ask before you evaluate, and this is really for the whole season, you know, like, can you evaluate if you're struggling with the same thing? Because I don't think the answer is yes. Like, I, that is the definition, that verse right there. If you're struggling with the same thing, you hypocrite, like experience victory, some diligence, some self-control, and then you can go evaluate and help somebody else out. If you guys are here and you're like, maybe they're addicted, maybe I'm addicted, let me give you guys the easiest test ever, okay? And some of y'all listening, y'all know what's coming. Y'all know what question I'm about to ask, and you don't want to hear it. 
but I'm going to ask it. And I would first start with this. And ironically, it's the first thing you do. What do the first five minutes of your day look like? From the time you wake up groggy and all, what does that first five minutes look like? I don't want to answer this question. I, I'm a person right now who doesn't want to answer the question. Let me ask you this one. What do the last 15 minutes of your day look like? Genuinely, if I had to take your last 30 nights and give you a sum and recap, what does it look like? And I'm, again, F, big, fat F for JJ. I mean, I don't want to answer that. It's Instagram and Twitter. Like, if I had to look at the past 30 mornings and evenings, I would probably say 29 for 30. <laughs> Maybe 30 for 30 would be Instagram and Twitter. First thing. Maybe messages. Maybe. And let me stretch it out more. I mean, if that wasn't good enough for you, and you're like, I, I pass, I pass. Okay, let's ask you this. What does your weight in the Chipotle line look like? What about the Target checkout, the Starbucks line, when you're just waiting and chilling? Uh, here's a good one. And this one I don't do. This is the only one that I like check the box. In between your workout sets, <laughs> what does that look like? What are you doing in between your sets? This one, I massive failure. I, what does your bathroom break look like? Seriously, that for me, I'm like, F, 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 pass, ironically, F, F. I, I fail all of them except for the workout sets. And if you've never done this before, this, I've done this a few times now. And it's not scary enough to, I guess, change the behavior, but it is a scary moment. Next time you open up a juicy notification, like I'm talking about a DM from your church crush, an awesome sports update, uh, a fantasy score update, uh, <laughs> a Celine Dion, you know, concert update. I don't care. Whatever floats your boat, whatever gets you excited, try to be self-aware about the hit of dopamine in your brain and your reaction and your mood when you see the notification and when you feel yourself opening up your phone to that morning rush of a bunch of awesome texts, updates, scores, notifications. Feel like that warmth of your brain light up. It is insane. And if you do that or answer any of those questions above consistently like that litmus test, then guess what? I mean, honestly, <laughs> you're addicted to your phone too, bro. And guess what? I am too. <laughs> I really am. And it is one of the pieces of feedback. Like, how do you know if you're addicted to your phone? Well, guess what? At some point, at somewhere in your life, someone's probably told you, whether it's a family member, a friend, a boyfriend, or a girlfriend, if someone's told you that you spend way too much time on your phone, then guess what? <laughs> You've, you're spending way too much time on your phone. And by a miracle, if you're awesome enough to say, JJ, I passed that test, I have one thing to say to you. You liar. <laughs> you liar. How do you have a smartphone and not struggle with this? Unless, no, I'm just kidding. Genuinely, if you can, that's amazing. What's very clear to me is this. No one naturally, I think, is not addicted or desiring to be addicted to the smartphone. I think it takes a journey of saying, this is really bad for me. This is killing my focus level. John Mark Comer and the Ruthless Addiction to Hurry says this. We officially have, as human beings on average, have a shorter attention span than goldfish. We have a shorter attention span than goldfish. And if that doesn't sound true to you, think about this. The most scientifically proven and modified app that has been engineered to capture your attention and hook it the most is what? Short form, eight second, quick hitting videos that hook you in serve you content and you mindlessly what scroll down to the next one and the next one and the next one and all of a sudden it's been 45 minutes boom and you have just wasted 45 minutes of your life i'm talking about tiktok if that wasn't clear enough but the pinnacle from all of our entertainment think about it from books from plays to silent movies to movies with sound the pinnacle of our ingenuity as humans and engineering is a short form factor, five to 15 second video. And that is the limit of our attention span to that degree. 
that's what we prefer the most. And seriously, like if you're like me, that is absolutely where I fall right now. I have some stuff at the end of the episode that we can talk about again. And I have some stuff at the end of the episode that we can talk about the best decisions I've ever made that I want to re <laughs> that I want to recommit to. We're going to, we're going to hand out, uh, you know, cards at the end of this episode and make you sign them and then hand them back to the youth pastor, you know, signaling your commitment to this decision. Okay. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> no, but seriously, like if, if you're on that spectrum, I'm with you and let's do something about it. But number two, if you guys are evaluating the other person or yourself at this point, so to kind of help demonstrate this point, I thought of something that's helpful. I really think you can kind of describe phone obsession and the kind of seriousness of it on a spectrum. On the very left side, you have something like unadulterated, just free time. This is when you're like sitting on the couch. There's no agenda. I mean, like think about an airport waiting for your flight. You're about to take off. You're in the bathroom. Like these are pretty unadulterated moments where you are not giving your attention to a person. You're, and if you're not praying or meditating, like you're on your phone and honestly, phone use in this moment's like, it's fine, I guess. You know, but I would say even then, if it's a hundred times out of a hundred times in those free moments that you're using it to be on your phone, I'd say there's an issue and maybe it's not glaring to other people, but like you can make that evaluation yourself. Like if you're being honest and if it's a hundred times out of a hundred times, you are addicted to your phone. It's just not interrupting other people's life and you're kind of like undivided attention with them. And, but it's still an issue for sure. Now, if you slide that bad boy to the right, kind of like in the middle, let's just say a medium kind of like responsibility or time or situation, I would say this is probably like somewhat neutral to the necessary situations where your your attention is kind of somewhat expected. I would say like watching a TV show with friends or movies, watching a game, like a football game, playing a board game. These are mostly like at home, maybe out, casual situations, at the pool with a group of people, there's some people talking, there's some people chilling. I think what changes here is the atmosphere still might be very casual, and yet there is maybe somewhat of an expectation that you're participating in conversation, that you're present with other people. Like they are here, they're not gonna be here, they're not your roommates, they're gonna be leaving, and you're using that time with a somewhat of an expectation to just kind of zone out on your phone. And I think right there, especially. You think about that situation, if it's a majority of the times that you're on your phone and really honestly, even a small amount, I would say like the priorities are definitely mixed up. Like my priority is not being present with people. That's a big thing to be aware of. And number two, it's if that's 10 out of 10 times, like you're consistently around a group of people and you're consistently not prioritizing connecting and communicating and being present with other people. That's a pretty big, that's a pretty big red flag in my opinion. And that's a pretty, you know, genuine area to take notice and evaluation. And then if you slide that thing to the right, right, this is in the most, you know, like maybe I don't want to say serious, but this is, you know, definitely more intimate situations. You think about like family time, dinner time, you're on a date, you're at church, you're in a situation where you're, you're at work, you're on a conference call, any situation where you're attention is totally unexpected. Again, it's any situation where your attention is totally expected to be undivided. And you are using those moments to be on your phone for whatever reason. I think even in the worst of scenarios, like you're sitting in a timeshare with your partner and you don't want to be there. I'm sitting in Disney, Disney, okay? waiting in line for two hours in the sweltering hot sun with my wife and maybe like a friend. Like these are situations where I'm sorry. It's just like, if you're on a date, it's a great example. And we hear this one all the time. If you're on your phone, it is completely inappropriate. It's completely rude. It's completely dismissing that, Hey, you might be entitled. You might have my attention, but I just don't care about you enough to even give you that time of day. I would rather spend my time and my attention just browsing, doing something, watching something than being with you. And for me, I think if you ever encounter that, especially in a dating situation, especially in those like very intentional, 
totally expected situations where it's intimate. I'll give you guys a great example. I was checking fantasy pretty consistently in church when Kate and I were dating initially. Um, and she gave me the, she gave me so much flack. Like it was by far one of the most stern moments of our relationship. And she was totally right. I would, I had grown to a point slowly, but surely that where, especially my church didn't offer early service, I was on my phone consistently checking score. Like I was so addicted to this phone and football and this situation where I couldn't even sit in a church service without like, I'm maybe one time, like I could see a scenario or maybe once, but even then the principle is just gross of, you know, this is, this is your sacred time at church and you're using that to, you know, check like, where is your priority in life, brother? That's what I would say to JJ, you know, if I can go in a time machine. But more importantly, if you find situations where you're dating someone and they're on the right, right there on their phone in these situations, I'd say that's a major red flag that, you know, you should absolutely have a conversation about, express like this is not okay, especially if it's not, and then see what their attitude is. And if it's like an unrepentant, I'm not sorry, blah, blah, blah. I would say that's going to be extremely difficult to work with. And then that's for me, you know, where I would say that is a major red flag. And if their response doesn't warrant any sorrow, any ability to listen, any desire for feedback, uh, I would say it's borderline groundbreaker. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> it's a it's a very serious issue because if they're the, that way in their life with their phone, they're going to be that way in their life in multiple areas, not open to feedback, stubborn, their way. I don't care. This is my priority and I just don't care. And that is, for me, a big deal breaker. I'm not going to lie. So that's our episode on red flags. Are they addicted? Are they too obsessed with their phone? You know, for me, I think depending on the situation, it could definitely be a minor red flag or a major one. And if you're listening to this like me, the, the best decision I made in 2023, and there's been a few of them, like trying that 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 fair life protein uh, core power extreme shake that was definitely one of them, but number two or three you know, there's there's some other good ones. There was a one month period where I decided to sleep with my phone outside of the room in the bathroom, and that one decision was probably the best one I've ever made. And we went to Europe, and I got off my routine completely with my diet, my workouts, and that one. And it's a naughty little habit. So if you've never tried that, I dare you to try it for a week. I dare you. And it will change your life. Legitimately, it will change your life. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm also going to start patrolling my free time and just checking in. There's a whole entire episode that we could do on, you know, boredom is actually a good thing. Dr. Caroline Leaf is a big proponent of that. Is boredom a good thing? Well, it can be. You know, those moments in your day where we're not bored anymore. If you think about it, we are incessantly consuming or have something in front of us from the second we wake up to the second that we put our head down at night. Boredom can actually be a very good thing. Like those moments can easily turn into prayer or meditation. We just never have the opportunity to even realize it. So I love you guys. Have a wonderful Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. I hope this one hit hard. If it did, leave us a five-star review. Check us out on Patreon. We love you guys and have a wonderful day. Let's go.